So in the mid 1600s, the Spanish owned this church and it used to be a Roman Catholic church at the time. But then when the English came and took over, they also took over the church and they call it the Red Church because of the red brick that built up the church. It was destroyed, I think, in 1712 and, and rebuilt. So the original age of the church is unknown. But we know that it was built in the mid 1600s, which make this outside of Great Britain. This is the oldest Anglican church anywhere. And definitely the oldest church on the island, the oldest Anglican church in the Western Hemisphere. People, Spanish Town has so much history. It's, it's overwhelming the amount of history that's here. And again, I've always wanted to come here um, ever since I found out about the church in, in Clarendon. I've also wanted to see this one because we know that that is the second oldest church on the island. And then we also know that this is the oldest on the island and definitely on this side of the, of the globe. So outside of Great Britain, this is the oldest Anglican church anywhere. Even though originally it wasn't an Anglican church, it was built by the Spanish as a Catholic church. And the, the, the English took it over and changed the name naturally to an uh, Anglican church. So Jamaica Uncut OG Church and we are in Spanish Town and this is the Spanish Town Cathedral or the St. Catherine Parish Church. And yeah, so we have some more graves. A lot of them naturally start crumbling earth movement roots from trees So introduce yourself to the people. Okay, the name is Kiri Francis. I am the sacristan, or you call it Verger, the cathedral. All right, well, a sacristan is really a person who is responsible for the over, well, overseeing what takes place in the church on a daily basis. All right, cool. And how long have you been a part of this church? Well, I've been a member of the church for well over nine years. I've been working here for seven years. Okay, how did you get how did you get this position? How did you get involved in the church to be given this position? Well, first of all, you have to be a member of the church and not just a member, but um, you have to also be a committed Anglican, right? Because uh, the work also entails that you have to actually have to also understand the doctrine of the church, what takes place, etc. And also, being a people, the key to my job is actually being a people person. Okay, it's cool. Pretty much like customer service, interacting with people on a daily basis. Okay. The personality is very important, or you relate to others, in and out. Both church members and visitors. All right, people, so Jamaica Uncut are here with, we, we're at the, the, the Spanish Town Cathedral or the St. Catherine Anglican Church. And you, you would have. The, the, the history, the overall history of this church? Yes, to some extent, yes. All right, so this church was founded in what year? All right, well, the it was actually consecrated a cathedral in the year 1843, but um, the church really dates back its early, its humble beginnings to 1662. All right, now, the reason for a church being on this site in the first place, um, 
The Spaniards who first colonized the island had a church here which was believed to have been erected sometime around 1539. Um, when the English invaded the island, that church was destroyed, but in 1662, um, one of the first, or the first Anglican chapel on the island was erected. Now, that building was destroyed in a hurricane of 1712. Um, the construction of a new Anglican church was opened in 1714. It was really that um, 1714 church building that was enlarged um, and it subsequently became what is today um, the Cathedral of San Diego de la Vega. So that's the official name of the church. So because it was the official name of the town? Well, the name of the town was actually um, San Diego, well, the Santiago de la Vega. Ah. All right, so for the English, it was San Diego, which we know it as today. Right. So um, uh, the English translation to that, Santiago is actually St. James. All right, so... The cathedral can also be called the St. James Anglican Cathedral. Okay. Right, so it has both a Spanish and an English version to the name. This would be Jamaica's oldest um, church, basically used for continuous work, because worship has been taking place here since 1714. And as I mentioned, um, this section of the building existed then. The addition was the, the top section there, known as the chancel. And also the bell for you have seen it at the entrance. Right. All right, so those were later addition which, which brings to the end the building as we have it. All right, if we turn our attention, this is the camera to the back. At the very top is um, our grand pipe organ. All right, and that organ was installed in 1849. Right, now the church really has much of the church is old. It also shares a long history with or, um, organ music because we had an organ here which was installed sometime before 1755. This organ is actually the third. Um, to date, it is it's really the island's oldest um, playing type organ. But somebody told me that the oldest one would be the one in, in Clarendon. In Clarendon, that's right. That's um, the Anglican church in Vera yes. Alley. So Ali. that one is no longer working. Ah, right. so this is the oldest working the one. oldest working pipe organ. Ah, so great. All right, now, some very um, old furniture we have here. Um, this mahogany pulpit actually dates back to 1764. All right, and... Um, it is one of three of this kind still remaining in churches in the island. There is a similar one at the church in Port Royal, at St. Peter's Anglican Church, and there's another one at the Anglican Church in um, Old Harbor. While we're here and we're talking about pulpit, we also notice that every Anglican church we go across the island has an eagle, a brass eagle. Mm -hmm. I notice your church doesn't have one. All right, well, um, not most have, but not all, all right. Um, nine out of ten so far. Yeah, nine out of ten. <laughs> well, all right. Well, the, the, the purpose is really, it's really called a lectern, so reading stand. Yes. All yes. right. Um, the, the idea of having an eagle is really symbolic because of what takes place on the lectern, the reading of scripture. Mm -hmm. It's really an adaptation from the Church of England with the word of God being sent forth into the world. So just as the eagle soars. So the word of God is based. So it is really symbolic based on scripture. And that's the concept then, using an eagle-shaped lectern. Now, because it's a cathedral, um, a lot of persons uh, I know of the concept of a cathedral being a very large, um, magnificent edifice. But that's technically not uh, the case. Most cathedrals are large because, of course, they serve as places of pilgrimage. But the real importance of the church earned its status is because it has the seat of a bishop. It's really a bishop's church. All right. And so what you have here um, is called a uh, cathedral. All right. So that's how the church derived the name cathedral. All right. It really comes from a, a Greek word, uh, which means cathedra, which means throne or seat. So it's really the bishop's the church where the bishop has a seat, automatically making it the principal or the mother church of the diocese. And so this is the mother church of the Anglican Diocese of Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. And it's also said that this is, outside of Great Britain, this is the first the Anglican oldest. Yeah, yes. The oldest Anglican cathedral outside of outside England. Outside of England. Yes, it is. Right. 
Um, now you, you might wonder, because this is Spanish though, isn't it? and why not the cathedral is in the capital? Because Wasn't this the capital before? This simply because a lot of persons kind of get it, you know, right? Wonder yeah, I mean, it makes sense. So far away, but because it was the capital. Right. And secondly, it was the first Anglican church on the island. Right. So it, was really so it makes sense. It at does the make time. sense, right. All right, now here we have a stained glass window um, which dates back to 1848. Has it ever been broken? No, not okay. to my knowledge, no. Yeah. All right, and so we are actually in one of the chapels of the cathedral. Has this roof outsider 17, say around 17, how much, 12? 14. 1714, when the church was destroyed, has the roof ever been changed? Um, yes. Well, not so much the, the, but the shingle, the shingle part of it. Oh, they, they come um, off. Yes, in 2019, we did some restoration work on it. Who, who, who manned the work? Who, who commissioned it and paid for it? Um, it was the, the church for the most part. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> This is a the very finance really came from the church. Right? Okay. All right. I don't think we need to point out, even though the church, the cathedral, along with many of the other historic churches and sites fall under the National Heritage Trust. Mm -hmm. And the National Heritage Trust is a mere lobby group. And so what they do is to supervise um, and see to it that historic sites and buildings are, are maintained. So they source funds? Uh, no, no. What they do is to supervise and make sure that whatever is done, whatever restoration it, work will be Nothing change. So if you don't have the money to restore it, it just falls apart? Basically, yes. Which so is very sad. So their purpose is, 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 is not significant to the preservation of the building itself. It's just to ensure that you don't alter the, the structure of the building. The structure. And of course, you have to understand the Heritage Trust um, is not one of those organizations that would pour the millions of dollars on historic I'm no, but if they, with, um, they could lobby with the government. That's what they do. Really. They could lobby with the government it's to really get government funds. To, um, to maintain historical sites. But you just said the church pay for it. The church pays for why it. Why wouldn't the government pay for it? If it's such a big part of our history, why wouldn't the government have a body that, that funds come from this body, mm -hmm. from a body within the government, to make sure that these sites are kept okay. as a part of our history? Well, that remains a mistake. Charge a, a minimum visitors see mm -hmm. to to come and see the history because if this is one of the oldest churches outside of england mm -hmm. why wouldn't the government invest what you take in consideration there should be about 67 or so historic churches across jamaica and i can't tell not one none of them none so yeah, but you've been to yeah. some that has five people yeah. in and there that's one of the reasons the lack of membership so the reason you'd find that, um, funny enough, you know, the historical sites in Jamaica that are best, uh, are well maintained, are really the churches, and it's because of the congregation. That, that put money that together put to... put money together, because of course it's their church. But I can't imagine the congregation can afford to, to upkeep this grand no, building. No, it's not easy, because they took, I can tell you, it took years of fundraising. And they're going to, to say, oh, you can't use this material, can't use this Right. And, we have to, and before we begin that project, we have to actually write to them, invite them to come to see what is taking place. All right, so another of Bacon's work, the second piece we'll find here, follow, we just looked at the Howard Monument. So. From a governor. He was another English governor again, Sir Adam Williamson. This one is um, even a little bit more interesting um, because if you notice here it, on the monument, it mentions about the island of Saint, Saint, Saint Domingue. All right, so Saint Domingue um, is the contemporary Haiti. All right, so um, he served as governor of Jamaica and also later. Um, Captain General, or in a way, said, in charge of the island of um, Saint Domingue. All right, so this was the start of the Haitian Revolution. We look at 1791. All right, now it is significant, and I'd like to point this out because not many persons knew that the Haitian Revolution was started by a Jamaican freed slave who went there and became a voodoo priest. Mm. All right, I so his name was um, Dotty Bookman. That's something to bear in mind. Dotty Bookman. Dotty Bookman. Oh, so I have a book and it's just full of dirt. Uh, <laughs> dirt. <not> really. <laughs> dirt. <laughs> well, no, you got the name, but um, yeah. 
It was around that time that the Roman Catholic Church, which was wiped out by Britain for some time, was reintroduced because of how the French were devoted Catholics. So when the British invaded the island, you know, the, the Roman Catholic Church was um, wiped out for some time. Oh. And so, because if you read really the history, the first Christian church established on Jamaica, in Jamaica, the first church was um, uh, the Church of Peter Martyr, which was um, in New Seville, now a part of St. Anne's Day. All right. With, uh, of course, English colonization, our history was reshaped. All right, and so we have the oldest surviving churches now being Anglican churches. But it was really the, the, the Roman Catholic church that was really here before. Right, and including so, this one. Yeah, there was one that was here. There were about three in Spanish town between, um, between 1523 and 1530. Okay. Very, very interesting question. The headstones in the floor, mm -hmm. are these actual graves or were these actual graves? They are actual, not words. They, they are, are actual, actual graves. graves. And they're not really so much headstones, they are graves. They are graves. Yeah. Right. Um, no, the tradition, and this is one of the few, there are other churches, but it's one of the few you'd you, you really find um, graves. No, the tradition really goes back to Europe, which would really be strange. Of course, because in the, the cathedrals and the basilicas in Europe, the monarchies, eh, the bishops, are laid to rest inside these churches. Most of them are really in um, uh, crypt. But here in Jamaica, um, the idea of crypt, not crypt, would have been very much expensive, too expensive, so at the time. So what they did was a simple grave, eh? simple burial. But in place of where you would have a crypt, they made the grave so detailed that they, they, they touch almost every information and the life of these persons. Now, this one in particular, and why I'm so much stopped here, um, here lies the body of Peter, Colonel Peter Beckford, and somebody take note of um, the money that started the Beckford and Smith School, which is today, San Diego High, mm. really came from um, Peter Beckford, the way it was money that he left. But we often hear about John Colbeck, and we always hear about Colbeck Castle, and school children are blown away by the Colbeck story. Um, but not many Jamaicans actually knew that um, John Colbeck himself was laid to rest inside the cathedral here in Spanish Town. And so this is his grave, and so he died in February 1682. Right. So his early years were recorded that he actually was one of the military officers who helped in the capture of the island in Oliver Cromwell's famous, we call it today, the Western Design. Um, and so he, along with ten venerables, um, Robert Sadgwick, um, a few others were helped in the capture of the island, and so he was handsomely rewarded with um, pounds and, of course, land. And it was uh, from there that he erected the impressive uh, mansion, which he later renamed to himself in Castle. So we're going to check out the organ now, people. So this is the um, Cathedral of 1849, Walker's Pipe Organ. And um, this one is a three manual. So here we have the, the manual, which is where the organist would control sounds, etc. And we have the console. Now if you notice, the console is detached from the manual. Uh, the, the manual. Now it's really connected by um, wires, which runs underground. Why is there pipes? Why? Well, right. um, oh. No, the funny thing about this is that it was converted to electronic. Okay. It came, it was actually a pumped organ. Mm. I remember looking at 1849. No, no, I have no electricity. And old an organ survived so long. There have been constant alterations that have been done to it to really have it compete with organs of this era. All right. So, um, the first major change to the organ really came about um, 1953. Um, the organ was damaged in the 51 hurricane, Hurricane Charlie. And at that time, it was uh, pulled down 
and sent back, shipped back to the factory in um, London for repair work. Um, in about 1954, um, the restoration was completed and the organ came back. Still survive. It still survive. Still right, play survive. every every Sunday. Yes. So a piece of Jamaican history people, Jamaica uncut as we take you around the island and show you historic sites. Um, so this is the St. Catherine Parish Church or the Spanish Stone Cathedral. Amazing structure, over 300 years old, still standing and still in pristine condition. As he mentioned, the roof has been repaired a few times recently. Some of the shingles were changed, but has not been destroyed since the last destruction in 1714. Jamaica Uncut OG Church, Spanish Town, Jamaica, the once capital of Jamaica. Now, rich, rich, rich in history. There is so much history in this town. And again, I'm reaching out to the government and whichever body is responsible for restoring and upkeeping history, we need to do better. Jamaica Uncut, cut out. The Trinity came about. Yeah. And so when it started attending there now, the minister at the time had to come from England. So, yeah. But it lasted for some years and it uh, was damaged during, it never really recovered after the hurricane charge. The, the Trinity Church? Yeah. So it, did it broke down now? Um, it's closed. It's no longer a church per se. 